Sunday, everyone. Welcome to another uh, wonderful, beautiful Tuesday. It was such a gorgeous day today. I uh, got up a little bit, not very much, um, but I hope to get it outside more. I'm looking forward to harvesting some sage pretty soon. Uh, so if you're interested in going sage picking, um, shoot me a, a message and let me know. Um, I'm hoping to do kind of a co-ed uh, ceremony where we can go up on the hill and just pick some sage and pray and drum and sing together. Um, you know, social distancing, um, pretty easy to do in the middle of a huge of those hell. So um, it's just really respecting and honoring everybody and honoring um, the land itself. I'm looking forward to connecting with the land again. Um, but and say, um, welcome again to this wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Um, I'm Chantal, if <laughs> you don't know already. I am Cree, Métis, and Anishinaabe from Muskeg Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, which is in Treaty 6 territory. Uh, but I would like to start by acknowledging the land upon which we stand, which is really important because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you've been, and you don't know where you're going. So this, uh, where I live now, is Mohinsta, uh, which means elbow in Blackfoot. It's um, the home of, tr of the Treaty 7 people, the home of the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai and Bagani, the Sarsi Dene from Zutsuna, and the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley's First Nation. Uh, Wesley First Nation, sorry. And um, we're also walking in the footsteps of Métis Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Métis sash to access that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. And I think it's so important to acknowledge the land before anything we do, because it just gives us a sense of purpose. It gives us a sense of place. When we do it, it's not just empty words. We're acknowledging you know, the history that is steeped into this land, the people that were walking this path before us, before we were even um, conceived, <laughs> before we were even uh, planned, our ancestors were planned. We've been walking this path for generation after generation after generation. So when we acknowledge the land, we're acknowledging the families that have been here, that know the stories of this land, that have a relationship with the land. And they teach us how we need to have a relationship with the land, but also a relationship with each other. Um, in Cree, we always say, all my relations. And it's not just relations of the two that gets, which is us people, but it's all, all of our relations. So the plants and the animals and the winds and just the breath of life that everything around us has. And so we really honor that when we acknowledge the land. We acknowledge how we need to have that relationship with the land to be healthy on all fronts, um, to really know what our purpose is in this place and what our place is in community. And so we acknowledge the families that have kept traditions alive and stories alive and ceremonies alive in this place. Um, and we acknowledge all of the things that have brought us together and brought us here. And so um, we also acknowledge the re responsibility that we have to maintain that knowledge, uh, the responsibility that we have to learn from each other, to grow together, to build community in a meaningful way, but also the responsibility that we have to make a better world for all of our future generations. And so um, just to welcome everybody in a good way, uh, I love to start with a Cree welcome song. Um, traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing in rounds of four, one of the four directions of the medicine wheel. But this song is a little different. We actually sing it in rounds of three, and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning. There's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to really honor each other for those differences uh, because we need those differences to make the world amazing because if everybody was exactly the same it would be really weird and boring and nothing would ever get accomplished and so we need all of those differences to come together to really build that strong and resilient community and so that's what this song honors it honors everyone's voice in the circle and it doesn't necessarily mean that you know of everyone in the circle but it's important to get to know them. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to agree 100% of the time with everybody in the circle. But when we come together and we find those compromises, that's truly what makes our community strong and resilient. And so when we sing this song, we do it to welcome everybody in, to honor everyone without judgment, and to really hold space for them. The reason that we do it in rounds of three is so that people are free to leave and come back into the circle. Because sometimes we need to step away, and sometimes we want to be welcomed back in with open arms. And that's why it's so important to welcome everyone with this song and with that energy, there's other songs that can welcome people in. Um, I just find that this one 
this one calls to my heart and it calls to my family. Um, I thank the Napa Howe family for keeping the song and the story of it alive because for many generations we couldn't speak our languages, we couldn't share our stories or our songs. And so when we look at songs like this that have endured, it shows exactly how resilient our people can be. And so I'm very thankful and humble every time I share it. And it's important to acknowledge where those things come from, where those teachings come from, and where our songs have come from. Um, and so I'd like to share the Cree Welcome song. I'm going to stand up to sing. And I'm not going to walk all the way back because I have a big bucket of hide right now making rattles today. Really gross. Tell you a story all about it. <laughs> so this is Mia Sid, the Cree Welcome song. And it doesn't just mean welcome. It also means beautiful. Me asin, me asin, asinina, asinina, e peta kote iwa goma ga. Oh, 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 Hazard of you know coming in from home, um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about. Well, I'm soaking rattles right now, so um, I'll be making rattles with uh, some kids uh, tomorrow and on Friday, and I'm really really excited because um, when we hold a rattle, I know that different territories have different teachings for um, rattles, different teachings for drums, and so the rattle is kind of that universal <laughs> instrument. Thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it sounds like kind of that first uh, hint of spring, so it's kind of when the um, when all the snow starts melting and it starts turning into ice and it gets that really funky crackle to it and that's that's kind of what the rattle sounds like when it crackles. It's that new beginning. It's that new dawn. It's the life that's coming back. And so this is why it also represents water. And so when you are playing it, sometimes it does sound like uh, water going down a brook or a stream or sometimes it sounds like water um, going down uh, or raining or you know in the ocean sometimes when you shake it back and forth it does sound really beautiful there's even an ocean drum which is kind of designed it's funny the same way as a rattle is so it has you know those beads those wonderful things on the inside um, but then it has a top and a bottom similar to a rattle but we play a rattle like this whereas a water drum we just let it flow and it does sound like the water rushing, the water um, crashing, and sometimes we will play it as well, which has a different tone entirely. But um, it teaches us about that sacredness, the gift of water, the gift of life, um, and the gift of connection that we have to those uh, you know, those ebbs and flows of our life. Um, that it teaches us that we have to honor every season because there's water. There's different water that comes to us in every season. You know, whether it be the cleansing water, the healing water, or um, the water that nurtures our plants and our bodies and our um, 
brothers and sisters, the animals. But it teaches us really about honoring that. And so along that vein, um, I wanted to share the water song. Uh, next week, I'll share it with a rattle. <laughs> this week, um, I'm going to share it on my drum. Um, unfortunately, uh, my rattles keep going missing. So I've had probably at least 20 rattles that ended up going missing, whether it be at rallies or at ceremonies or <laughs> um, different events that I've done that they just kind of wandered off and I hadn't received them back but you know they're probably doing work where they need to do that work same with some of the drums that have just kind of wandered off I know that they're doing good work in the places that they need to be and so I'm never um, too worried about the path that they're on just I pray that uh, the people that have taken them or have them in their possession are doing the good work that they need to and healing with them in the way that they're supposed to because that's what those tools are for and so that being said I'm going to share the water song um, I'm going to break it down a little bit, too, uh, just because I know people are like, what's that word? What's that word? Or how do I pronounce that? Um, I don't know what the words themselves mean. A lot of the songs that I've learned have been phonetic. I've learned a few of the words, um, but not entirely. And I think that's part of um, the power that we have is to take back our language, because uh, unfortunately, I wasn't raised with my language. I want I wanted to be. I wanted to learn, but um, unfortunately, I didn't. So now, <laughs> now that I'm older, I'm uh, slowly but surely trying to learn. Um, and so please forgive my pronunciation if I am pronouncing it wrong and you are a very fluent Anishinaabe speaker. So this is the Anishinaabe water song. Um, when I heard it, I always hear the rain coming down and then the thunder and the lightning. Um, that probably ties into my name. She who dances and sings with spirits in a storm. Probably why I always hear rain and I always love, love, love storms. Um, my cousin, she hears the river. She hears the river flowing. She hears it going over rapids and going slow and becoming a creek, becoming a river, becoming rapids, becoming huge waterfalls. So that's what she hears when she hears the song. But my other cousin, who's been living in Vancouver pretty much her whole life, she hears the ocean. She hears the ocean rocking back and forth and back and forth and crashing, the waves crashing on the uh, banks, the waves crashing into each other. So that's what she hears when she hears the song. Um, and I remember going to both coasts and I can definitely hear it you know, when I think about the song and when I think about the ocean when I'm standing beside it, I can definitely hear that. And so it might, you might hear the rain, you might hear the river, or you might hear the ocean. But no matter what, it represents water. And water is a sacred gift. It's, um, it's life. We, we don't live without water. Plants don't live without water. Everything needs water to survive. Uh, it's kind of the building block of life. And so it teaches us to really honor and respect water and be thankful for it. Uh, it teaches us to honor and respect our emotions because just like the storm or the river, sometimes our emotions might get overwhelming and sometimes they might be, you know, kind of violent or kind of crazy and very chaotic. But it teaches us that we need those things to change. We need those things to learn and to grow and to move forward. We need sometimes that big storm to just really cleanse everything and start fresh. It's the chaos that causes rebirth. And sometimes the greatest pain can lead us on the greatest journey. And so this is why this song is so important. And so this is the Anishinaabe water song. I'm going to break it down. Um, so the first part, which is the gentle part, the rain or the river flowing or the ocean rocking back and forth is wishita, do ya, do ya, do ya, wishita, do ya, do ya, day. Wishita, do ya, do ya, do ya, wishita, do ya, do ya, day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya day. So that's the first part. And the second part, got to be a little bit louder because it's the waves crashing or the storm and the uh, blowing and the thunder and the lightning or the waves like boom or the huge waterfall. And so it's we shot Danaya. Hey ya, hey ya. We shot Danaya. Hey ya, hey. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey ya. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey ya. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey ya. We shot the naya, hey ya, hey. We're gonna sing each of those four times. We're gonna start slow, just like that storm or the river or the ocean and we're going to build and build and build and build and build and get faster 
and go crazy and then we're gonna just come right down at the end so it's uh always really wonderful to do it with a big group of people because even if you're off it sounds amazing because <laughs> rain is perfectly in beat and perfectly in sync neither is you know a babbling brook or the ocean nothing's perfectly aligned and i would say um there's no perfection in nature in fact this is why our hearts are on all the side. That's the wrong beat. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya, day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya day. We should do ya, hey ya, hey ya. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. We shot me, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya, day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya, day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya, day. We should do ya, do ya, do ya. We should do ya, do ya, day.
just at risk or have kind of fallen apart because of the lack of communication. I think talking online is great, but there's something really important about making those connections in person. Um, I always get really hurt. It hurts my soul when I watch people who have been friends for years and years and years argue over Facebook. Like, oh, sit down together, have a tea together, really take care of each other. because That's what we're here for. I mean, our whole human experience should be about, you know, maintaining relationships and really appreciating each other. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. I screw up all the time. I was going to drop an F-bomb. See, see that's just how I screw up. <laughs> but it's really about, you know, having that compassion, not only for other people, but for yourself. And recognizing that sometimes when we make mistakes, that's okay. As long as we don't keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again, uh, which is what the Thunderbird teaches us. So I'm going to share the Thunderbird song. <laughs> so uh, the Thunderbird is, um, it's like fate or destiny. It's that thing that pushes us forward um, and leads us on the path that we need to be on. And oftentimes we are faced with decisions. Do we want to go down the easy road or do we want to go down the hard road? And that's our choice. The Thunderbird is going to be behind us, kicking us in the butt the whole way down, uh, depending on which road we go down. But with the Thunderbird, because it's um, our ancestors pushing us forward, if we become stagnant, that's when things start to get a little rough for us. Because the Thunderbird is trying to give you like hints, like, go forward, go this way, <laughs> why aren't you listening? Until eventually those little pushes become harder pushes which makes our life a little bit more difficult until eventually the Thunderbird gets fed up with us and just kicks us in the butt to put us on the right path. And so um, I've experienced that firsthand. So uh, nine years ago, I was in a car accident. Um, it, was, it was pretty traumatic. I couldn't walk for about a month and a half and I've had to have four hip reconstructions because of it. Um, but when I got hit, uh, I had a choice in that moment. I had to figure out, okay, Am I going to feel sorry for myself or am I going to figure out why this happened to me and how I can how I can use it to find my right path? Because obviously I wasn't on the right path before because this happened. And so I had to think really deeply about what the Thunderbird was trying to show me. And she was showing me that the path that I was on, I was meant for something so much bigger than that. If it wasn't for that car hitting me, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't, you know, have been able to share my songs and my stories and my teachings and work with um, kids and through the university, um, but be able to really honor my culture and be able to heal through my art and through these wonderful things um, and be able to help other people heal as well. That was my path, but also the path of activism. <laughs> um, I had done a lot of activism before, but, you know, I didn't pay the bills. But of course, there's a lot of fear, I think, sometimes when people stand up for what's right. And it's really important to just take that breath, swallow your fear, and be like, where do we want to be five years from now? Where do we want to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Do we want to be in the same position? And if I don't speak out, who will? And Creator gave me a big voice, so I needed to use it. And so instead of using that accident as an excuse or as a crutch, I used it to give myself wings to know that I can move forward. And I viewed it more as a blessing because it put me on the path that I'm on now. And so sometimes it's, it takes a moment to like look at those terrible things that have happened to us to really understand where it's leading us. And oftentimes they lead us to the most beautiful opportunities and to the most wonderful people. And so I'm thankful every single day. And um, all of those subsequent hip surgeries told me how to slow down. But I mean, this is me. I never slowed down. I was in a wheelchair for six months and I was still going to rallies and going, okay, somebody push me. I got a drum. <laughs> but uh, everyone has a different path. But I think it's really about not being afraid of the path that is meant for you and not judging other people for following their own path, but just carving it out for yourself and knowing that the Thunderbird is behind you, leading you. Uh, the Thunderbird is not only fate and destiny, but it's our intuition. And it's never, ever, ever wrong. If anyone's ever ignored their intuition, they know that it's never wrong. <laughs> and so it's really important that we pay attention because it's the Thunderbird trying to put, on, put us on the right path, the gentle path. It's also our ancestors calling to us. It's our ancestors that are calling from the past and leading us forward. And it's also, you know, those future generations that are calling so that we lay that good foundation for them.
And so the Thunderbird song teaches us that. And it also teaches us not to take life too seriously because we never know the gifts that sometimes come in different forms, including different people and those lessons that we need to learn. But if we keep repeating them over and over and over again, we get stuck in that rut, the Thunderbird's gonna come and kick us in the butt. So watch out for that. <laughs> so this is the Thunderbird song. and really thankful because for the weekend um and last week i actually got to drum with humans again it was amazing <laughs> to be able to drum with people um and to be able to hear each other's voices and be able to share my drums and be able to hear just their voices as well just in unison it was so it was so beautiful and i missed that so much <laughs> i forgot exactly how much i missed it until we actually got to do it and so um Specifically, I love drumming with little kids, their voices, and just like how, you know, um, how they love the drums. Of course, kids love making noise, but just how they're just filled with so much wonder and openness, and it was just beautiful to see. Uh, also, when I was drumming, just how many people came forward and asked if they could join the circle. I'm like, of course, everyone is always welcome in the circle, because the circle, we can just make bigger to welcome everybody in and make really, really, really big <laughs> because of the whole social distancing thing. But that's okay. This is why it's good to, you know, drum together in a big park. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very thankful for that gift to be able to share again. Ooh. Including tomorrow when I get to share uh, rattle making with some kids. So I'm very, very blessed and humbled to be able to do that again. Um, so one song that I got to share with the little, little kids, which was awesome, was a song that I haven't sung in a really long time, and I was really thankful for uh, them to just bring that out of me. So this is um, this is the only Blackfoot song I know. <laughs> this is Gitsi Uh So uh, it's Gitsi Gokkoman. So Blackfoot is very hard, which is probably why I haven't learned a lot of Blackfoot songs, or at least why they haven't stuck with me. But then again, whatever's meant for us, we'll remember, and whatever's not, we won't. So this is probably why this song has stuck with me. Um, and I'm very thankful to um, my sisters from another mother, Sandra, who shared this song with me, and also Stephanie, who shared this song with me. Um, and I'm very, very humbled. Um, also, it is Olivia Tailfeather's song. I found out later on when I was sharing it. I was like, oh, this is Olivia Tailfeather. So I was like, I didn't know. But it's always good to know where those songs come from. <laughs> you always get um, and say who you learned songs from. Uh, but also, if you know their roots, if you know where they've come from, it's good to honor that as well. And so uh, this is Gitsi Kaufman, which means I love you. Um, I love you. I love everyone. And I think it's really um, important that we honor and love each other in this time. And especially honor and love ourselves um, so that, you know, when we have our healing done, it makes it easier to help other people with their healing. And so, and it's always ongoing. I say done, like there's actually an end. There's no end. Everything's a circle. All right. So this is Gitsi Gokkaman, the I Love You song. And I'm going to sing it to everyone. Um, I'm going to sing it to Mohinskis, because that's where we live. I'm going to sing it to Na'a, because that's Mother Earth. And then back to everyone. Hey, 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 hey,
Um, I love that song. It's so great to teach it to kids too, because it's really important, I think. The like three main things that you should learn in any okay, four. There's four things that you should learn in any language. It's hello, thank you, I love you, and where's the bathroom? So, <laughs> um, so the next song I wanted to share um is it's been running through my head a lot i mean because i've been thinking a lot about the sun and the winds and um watching my garden grow but also thinking about the seasons and how quickly they change uh this song is the four direction song it's also known as um uh when they are hope it's also known, it can be found on um youtube under the cherokee morning song Bobby Robertson had done it, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful song. When I first learned it, I learned it as the Four Directions song, and so I would greet the morning with it, greet the afternoon with it, greet the evening with it, and then, of course, greet the night with it, or greet the various seasons with it as well. And so it just teaches us about that balance that we need that is all around us. <laughs> it's the balance of you know, um, our heart medicine and our mind medicine, those balance each other out. It's uh, the balance of our spirit and our physical body because those balance each other as well. But we need all of those elements together within us to be able to grow and to heal and to help and to be on our right path. Um, and when any one of those things is not quite there or not quite aligned, that's when we get into a lot of problems and a lot of trouble. And so it's really about acknowledging that we are a full being. We're not just bits and pieces, but we're a whole human. And when we lose sight of that in other people, I think sometimes we lose sight of that in ourselves. And so this helps us to heal. It helps us to honor all of those four directions within us and all around us. And so this is Wendy Ajo, the Four Winds song. <clears throat> and humble for technology. I've been thinking a lot about that and just thinking about how much outreach that I've been able to do and how many classes they've been able to share with and how many people I've been able to share with from the comfort of my home. I mean, it's, it's a problem because my cats keep jumping up on my lap when I'm trying to be all professional, but you know, <laughs> that's just how they roll. They're like, oh, you're doing something important? Please, let me show my butt in the camera. So that is just how my cats are. <laughs> but um, <laughs> note i'm going to share the laughing song because they've been making me laugh a lot this week when i've tried to be professional <laughs> but it's just uh it reminds us to be humble and to not be afraid to laugh ourselves because laughter truly is the best medicine but um no, life's too short to be serious all the time so it's really really important to laugh about things and to really see joy and beauty and all the wonderful things around us uh, and so this is the laughing song this is from the four winds singers um and I had uh, first heard this song and it just called to me and I just love the um, upbeat nature of it and how it does teach us how to be humble. And so this is the laughing song or the happy song. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
up and speed up because kids just love them and they go absolutely crazy for them and it's just a lot of fun in general <laughs> i guess you're pretty pretty excited but um i'm gonna share the bear song just because i do love the bear song and it's a good song to uh to honor everybody and it honors community because the bear that's what it represents the bear represents community because the bear always pays attention to what's going on around it um and it always knows what to eat and when to eat it this is why we would always watch the bear it always knows when to get it ready for winter and you know if it's not gonna be that bad of a winter bear's not gonna be very fat a few years ago so a bear in kananaskis incredibly fat and to coincide with that it was a really really cold winter here in Mokinsis. Um, so the bear knew what was happening. We always will watch the bear, uh, even if the bear is showing us what to eat and what not to eat, or also if there's a problem. So um, out west with the pine beetles, the bears are actually chewing and pawing, ripping the pods of pine beetles off the trees, eating them, trying to protect the trees and trying to warn us, like, these beetles are an issue, get rid of them. And they warn us of wonderful things, um, <laughs> not so wonderful things, I suppose. Um, out in Banff National Park, about nine years ago now, um, there were a whole bunch of lovely wolves that were just dropped in the middle of Banff National Park from our lovely American friends, thinking, eh, it's Banff, it's huge, there's lots of food to go around, I'm sure it'll be fine. But the wolves actually started to take a literal bite out of the population of the deer and the elk and the moose and the bighorn sheep, those game animals. And the bear who would eat those animals normally saw that those be uh, those uh, wolves were causing a problem. So instead of eating those animals with the other things that it would normally eat, the bear actually started to eat the wolves. 
Because the bear knew by eating the wolves, not only would it protect those other animals for the seasons to come, but it would be sustained. And so they teach us in our own um, in our own homes, in our own communities. Sometimes we have to make hard decisions to benefit and to better all of our communities. And sometimes things like cleaning up messes that aren't necessarily ours. Uh, yeah, it sucks, but it's necessary because it shows that we actually care. And it shows that we really want our community as a whole to be a good place. And so this is the Anishinaabe Bear Song. Used to be my son's favorite. Now his favorite song is the Raven Song. <laughs> song. Sorry, somebody's just pulling in front of my house and I was like, who's that? Oh, it's my mom. She's not coming in. Oh, okay. Um, this is a creator song. And I know I sang it last week, but it, it has a very special meaning to me. And I was just so thankful to be able to share it with my great aunt. And um, I had never really shared it before with her. And when I did, she actually started singing along. And so it really shows where our songs have traveled and you know, how much they've had to get through because a lot of um, people in my family were really raised with a lot of our culture, our songs, and our stories because there was a fear around it. Um, and so it's, uh, it was kind of underground and it wasn't an option to really learn it unless you actually sought it out. And so that's why it's so, so important to really be able to maintain, be able to share and not hold our teachings so close to our heart, but know that the only way that our teachings will be heard is if we share them in a good way including our songs and including our stories because we have so much to learn from each other and from these teachings um and that was the whole point of treaty it was a promise to be able to share with each other and to be able to teach each other in a good way and i think if we actually adhere to that and honor that and everyone who moved to turtle island learned about the stories and the history and the beautiful songs and beautiful dances and were, you know welcomed into the circle without judgment they um I think would have been so much more enriched instead of the way that kind of things went. But I'm glad that that pendulum is swinging backwards so that we can teach everyone, we can share with everyone, because these teachings are, are meaningful and they're important. Um, and so this song was shared with me from my friend Elizabeth. Um, and she, uh, Night Sun is just phenomenal. Uh, she's an incredible rapper, incredible uh, jigger, and um, this all around amazing person and we have her cat so, <laughs> and um so when she shared this song it just resonated with me so deeply and then when i sang it with my aunt and she sang along it was just full circle of why the why our teachings and why our songs are so important and so um this song teaches us that everything is important everything in the circle is important all our relations are important and that creator has given breath to all of us has given life to all of us and so we can honor and respect each other's lives 
and um, moving forward in a good way. So this is the creator soul. <laughs> teaching so um, I, I recommend talking to many different elders and knowledge keepers because you never know who's going to share um, something that's really going to resonate with you so it's not about right or wrong it's just different and that's okay um, so the first medicine that we have in the east the decree we always start in the east with the rising sun is sweetgrass sweetgrass is associated with the mind it's associated with fire um, because every time we learn something there's like a little spark that goes off in our brain little synapses firing, um, but also whenever we make decisions, sweetgrass really helps us to make decisions because it makes us weigh it in the right way. And there's seven blades of sweetgrass in every section of the blade that's braided together to give it strength, but also to remind us of the seven teachings of our seven generations, the ancestors watching us from uh, seven generations behind and those future generations that we're leaving that foundation for, but also reminding us that we're part of that seven generation. It's all woven together. and it's not a straight line, it's a circle. Everything that we do has impacts across the board. And so Sweetgrass reminds us to make good decisions. Because when we're weighing things in terms of generations, we make way better decisions because it's not just about us. I think more politicians need to think in terms of generations and then maybe maybe our world would be a lot better than it is now. And so that's Sweetgrass, uh, that's the power of our mind, that's fire, it's um, masculine energy. We're a balance of both masculine and feminine. Um, but that's because Grandfather's Sun rises in the east of that balance. Uh, we have cedar in the south for our physical bodies. Uh, it teaches us to really honor Mother Earth and all of the lessons she has to share with us. Um, to really acknowledge her and honor her. Uh, always give back because if we take and take and take, there's going to be nothing left. But always leaving the roots of the plant in the ground and being able to leave them with our community is really important. But just so that they can grow back um, in years to come. But it reminds us of that relationship, that reciprocal relationship that we have with the plants and the animals because we learn from them um, and we also give to them. So when we breathe out, 
trees are breathing in and vice versa. So it's about that relationship, that cyclical relationship that we have with everything in nature. And so that's our physical body. And cedar is awesome. So if you ever have a cold, cedar tea. Tastes like garbage, works like a drink. All right, the next medicine that we have is sage. Um, this is buffalo sage. And sage is the women's medicine. Um, it's connected with grandmother moon. It was connected with water because grandmother moon controls the tide. She pushes the tides in and out. Um, but it's also our emotions. So women cycle with the moon. So this is why we're directly connected with the moon. But remember, we're all a balance of masculine and feminine energy. So it teaches us about even um, two-spirit people are kind of that embodiment of all of those energies coming together, of that balance coming together as one. Um, so sometimes we need to get back to that perfect place of that perfect balance. Uh, and sage helps us to do that. Sage helps to regulate our emotions. It helps us to heal. It helps us to give uh, to community in a meaningful way, but also to remember to accept it at the same time. So this is sage. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, and sage is what we're going to be working with today. Um, so today. And then the last piece is tobacco. And this beautiful little bundle that I was gifted. Um, tobacco teaches us humility. Um, it's our spirit medicine. And so because it's a spirit medicine, we actually don't take it into our body. Because it's too strong of a medicine. This is why people get sick. Um, when people get addicted to smoking, um, it's not that they're actually addicted to the plant. It's that they have hurt or trauma or sadness that's inside them. And they're looking for a way to heal it. Um, but we have to look inside ourselves to heal, not ex externally. So tobacco helps us to pray. So when we gift it to someone as well, it's saying thank you from our hearts or our spirits to them, um, to their spirits. And so when we gift it to an elder or a knowledge keeper or a drummer or a singer or a storyteller, it's saying thank you for keeping those teachings alive and for sharing those beautiful, that beautiful wisdom with us. Um, when we gift it to someone to ask for a favor, more binding than any legal contract because it's a spiritual contract and you cannot break those. Um, and also when we gift it back to the earth, because whenever I go sage picking or grass picking, or pick any of my traditional medicines, um, I always lay tobacco down and say thank you to that plant. I ask permission to the earth for taking that plant, and I always leave the roots of the plant in the ground. But um, tobacco, high in phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, so it actually helps those plants grow back faster, which is awesome. Um, sometimes people ask me, what kind of tobacco should I gift? Um, and it's not about the kind or the amount. Um, it's, it's about the intention behind it, and that's with any medicine. It's the intention that you're putting into it. And so um, the perfect example I have of that is uh, I went to an event and um, I walked in and I kind of felt uncomfortable. It was kind of weird. I actually wasn't even sure why they invited me in the first place. I think they were just trying to check their uh, diversity box. Um, but when I got in there, it was very, um, very churchy, but not the fun kind of churchy, like the churchy that made me really uncomfortable. Um, and they gave me these two huge buckets of tobacco. And I'm like, wow, we're compensating for something. <laughs> and they're like, well, it's the best. I was like, pardon me? They're like, well, it's the most you've ever received. It was really expensive. And so it's the best. This is the best you've ever gotten. And I was like, um, I don't think you know how tobacco works. And they're like, yeah, we do. It was expensive. So it's the best. But then when I was presenting, they were scoffing at my teachings. They were making fun of my songs. Um, and I did not feel respected. And so that tobacco meant absolutely nothing. But then the next day, I was at Servants Anonymous drumming and singing with amazing women, uh, single moms, ooh, single moms today. Um, <laughs> and uh, as I was doing this, the women were having an amazing time. They were having a lot of fun. But there was one woman off to the side, and she was very, you could tell she was caring a lot. Um, and after we were done um, drumming and singing, and I packed everything up. Uh, she went outside for a cigarette and she came back in and she held out her hand and she was shaking. And so I held out my hand and she put that last little part of the cigarette back in my hand. And she told me um, about her daughter and how her daughter had been missing for almost a year. And she didn't know what to do and she was getting help from the police. And she asked me to pray. And so that little piece of tobacco, it had so much more meaning. It had so much more intention in it than those two huge buckets. And so it mattered and meant so much more. And so when we look at things like honoraria, when we look at things like gifting tobacco, it's not about the amount, it's, it's how does it matter to you and are you giving something truly of yourself? Because $5 to one person might mean nothing. $5 to another person might mean the world. And so it's really about 
acknowledging the intention behind all of those gifts and not the quantity of quality. So that being said, today we're only going to smudge with sage. Again, this is my beautiful smudge shell. Um, the shell itself represents water. Whenever the medicines go in, they represent earth because they come from the earth. No matter what medicine we're burning, it represents earth as soon as it goes, as it goes into the bowl. We let it on fire and it represents fire. And then the smoke going up to creator represents um, spirit. So it's our way to cleanse, it's our way to heal, it's our way to really you know, honor ourselves moving forward. Okay. I'm just taking off my lovely earrings here. Um, <clears throat> My mom always says we weren't born with uh, jewelry when we came into this world, so we don't need it um, when we're smudging. But uh, also metal holds energy, and we just want to let go of that energy. So oh, I'm going to need more matches. I prefer matches just because it's more natural. Um, I mean, if you're in a pinch, you can use a lighter, but aim for matches if you can, whenever. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not, never blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious. But you just fan it with your hand. And the first thing I do is I just clean my hands in it. So anything that I'm carrying, I get rid of. Bring it over my body four times. Go so in the four directions in my body. Touch my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. Touch my ears so it can be open to hear all the messages creator sends me. Close my eyes so I can see all the beauty that surrounds me and create it for my vision. Smudge my nose so I can smell danger and of course cookies. Smudge my mouth so I speak only true and kind words that are helpful. Smudge my throat. I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime so I can continue to give voice to the voiceless. My lungs, so I breathe good, clean air. My heart, so I remember to be kind and compassionate to all of those people around me, strangers, friends, family, and also with myself. <clears throat> my stomach, so all of the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. My womanhood, because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. I smudge my legs, so I walk this red road in a good way. My feet, so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth. I tread lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. <clears throat> and then, if there's anywhere else in your body that needs a little extra help, my back's a little sore today. I'm going to smudge my back. I always smudge my hips because of all those surgeries. And then, if there's anyone that you want to send love and appreciation to, you just hold them in your heart and you send that love to them. If you want to send healing to them, you can do that too. Um, if you, if somebody is unable to smudge for themselves, you can smudge for them as well. So things like babies or pets or um, yeah, maybe someone who's just very, very ill and they need to smudge. So it's sending that love to them. And when you're done, you say hi, hi, or miigwech, or thank you, or merci, or grazie, or chiche, or I need to learn how to say uh, thank you in many different languages. But yeah, so it's how you say thank you in your language. And it's about honoring your language. And so um, before I go, I'm going to share one last song, the healing song. <clears throat> and then when these times, um, it's really important. I think we all need to heal together. So this song is a ceremonial song that we would usually only share in ceremony. But um, there were several elders that carried the song that said now is the time that we need to share it. Um, we need healing not only for ourselves but for our communities. We need healing for our society, and you know we need healing to bring everyone together as that family. You know, for the standing people, for the crawling people, for the flying people, um, for the two-legged, which is us, for the four-legged. But all of us, we're all connected, and we all need healing in our own way. Um, but it teaches us to really honor that. And so when we sing it, of course, we sing it in four rounds, starting with four directions of the medicine wheel. But the third round, we actually stop drumming. And in that round, we invite you to pray for the things that you need in your own life, to pray for the people that need healing, um, the things around the world that need healing, or wherever you want to send that prayer and that intention. And then um, when the drum beat kicks in, just let that go to the universe or God, Allah, Buddha, whoever you pray to, um, just so that that energy can do the work that it needs to do. Because that's all prayer is, is just focusing your energy and focusing your intention. 
And so this is the Cree healing song, or the crying song, or the wailing song. That's the last one. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more people in person again really, really soon. So, uh, again, uh, hi, hi, Chimogwitch, and I will see you next week. Bye. Again. Have a wonderful week, everyone.